good evening guys so can i get some good evening good responses a great good evening guys so hello and welcome all to this boot camp on the most happening subjects of in interest internet of medical things shortly called iomt so uh, i am i'm janani and i'm your host and speaker for today's session and thank you for taking the time to join us today so as mehul told i had completed my masters in amrita university and i had worked as an uh, academician and also researcher for a couple of years and i had joined at skilling this is all about my short profile and that's all on my path so at end of the session you will be leaving with knowing an overview of iot in healthcare and how it works what is wearable system what are the different applications that the companies are working in how does the idea flow happens how do you develop an iot healthcare product or a prototype basically what are the design consideration key challenges of iot and a bit of hands on so this is the plan for today's session guys so um, my hope is that by end of the session you will have a new appreciation for the subject matter and you will continue your education with this subject or might be you can choose this as your career opportunity on the other hand so as i told you this is the agenda for today's session first we will just start with what is iot uh, how does iot influence other market then prominent with healthcare inside healthcare what is internet of medical things is all about we say uh, wireless body area networks or wearable devices what it is what is called mobile health all these buzzwords we will discuss in detail we will discuss we will discuss also the application related to all these things and also about personal healthcare system or point of care devices and we will see how the sensors are used and how the sensors are interfaced and built up to be an iot system and we will see a, a you know start on uh, hands on sessions so as mehul had given you an introduction uh i i uh, wish to talk about medical technology domain at skilllink so as you all know skilllink is an edutech platform or a startup company that provides online engineering courses for engineering students that's where our motto goes in skilling engineers and building a better world so uh, as to be your, to your knowledge the content is created by industrial expert and it is commercialized online through our lms platform so talking about medical technology uh, medical technology at skilling is one of the uh, best nourishing engineering domains striving hard to reach our best so we are group of engineers who are working in all degrees of medical technology domain and healthcare and one among is me so to the point everything uh, found at skilling uh, is for your success here yes so talking about internet of things so before talking about internet of things uh, which is it seems like you are hooked hooked up in the latest buzzword can somebody explain me what is internet of things yes sorry guys i had some kind of issue with not seeing the participants give me a minute uh janani so uh, we have restricted uh, uh, you know okay. that they will be able to sh chat with me or you only okay got it got it great mahul thank you good uh, are they able to unmute no or yes ah uh, no 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 janani uh, got it got it great uh, great mahul thank you so yes so as i told you iot uh, um, let's understand what is iot first so it, the full form is internet of things meaning it is interconnection of things as you could see in this picture it is interconnecting various things so what kind of things well almost everything that can be connected to other things so if i generally say internet of things it will be network of physical objects or devices it could be vehicles it could be buildings it could be home appliances electronic software anything into a single platform if you could see in this picture everything are connected to a single platform wifi that enables these objects to collect and exchange data so interconnection is basically to exchange data so uh, this is a general you know definition for iot so what iot is doing in our day to day life 
to be very straight forward iot is actually you know bringing automation in our day to day life so uh, i told you it is just interconnected why should they uh, do after interconnection after things are connected what is the purpose and what will they do they actually exchange information uh, there has to be uh, you know information stored somewhere as of now the popular concept is that they store information in a remote location that it could be a server or it could be some computer or it could be a cloud at home for example uh, to, to talk about uh, you know iot application at uh, home i could say um, see generally we had a refrigerator uh, consider you had a tetra pack carton of milk that has an embedded level sensor that can measure the level of milk so consider just you have a bottle and you have a level sensor which is embedded with it now this tiny microcontroller in the box will uh, actually measure the level of milk and that information will be sent to the refrigerator so refrigerator will be something like wifi enabled or gsm enabled correct so uh, this will uh, you know make this refrigerator to take or collect the data from the level sensor and put it to the wifi so if it finds that the milk level in the carton is low the refrigerator will send you an sms or a whatsapp message to bring a new carton of milk or it it will just alert a owner or otherwise now people are trying to build up a platform where uh, once the milk level goes low and if the owner is giving some rights uh, uh, to the software and giving some information that see this is the store i wish to buy in so that it can actually order a new carton of milk so this is all about iot at home and industry iot is also something similar okay like uh, might be uh, if you are having a printing machine there could be an iot sensor which is monitoring the health status of the machines so if something goes low or if some you had some temperature sensor or there could be some uh, required condition for that machine to work on those things parameters will be monitored by the sensors and those sensors will be you know passing the data to the owner where the owner can sit in a remote place and they can actually you know monitor the health condition of their machines so if some kind of abnormality rises in the emergency will be alerted that's the thing so so before getting into what internet of things is doing with healthcare i just want to give you a small glimpse of what is happening with the market so these are like market available products and these are like few good examples of iot so i think i hope these are like more familiar products for you guys so one is google home voice controller which is a smart iot device which allows us to enjoy features like you know media alarms light or controlling the acs volume of the tv or your mobile phone etc and even it it goes same with amazon echo plus as well might be it will help us to do a phone call or ask questions it will provide you answers it will check and say the weather or if you want to do some uh, you know household activity get and reminder kind of things or it will manage your to do and shopping list etc i think these are like more familiar and most of us in the participant we had one such device in our home where we are experiencing what are the top features of either the google home voice controller or amazon echo plus but uh, the other thing we have to talk is the next thing which is mentioned philips hue bulbs so philips hue bulbs is a very famous iot device and it is used as a personal wireless lightning system where you can control it using a mouse or your mobile phone and you can actually change the brightness like how your mobile phone behaves uh, you know there is something called as adaptive brightness right depending upon the ambient uh, you know environment's light your mobile phone's backlight changes uh, similarly the philip hue bulbs actually senses the environmental or ambient brightness and the, you know it adapts to the brightness and it changes its brightness and that data will be actually monitored and it will be saying that see today i had uh, you know overall i had given you 5% of less consumption some kind of you know and data analytics is also done with this philips hue bulbs such that it is creating the right ambience for every moment let it be uh, night or let it be in the daytime 
so next available device uh, this is one of the famous device which is food boot air quality monitor so this is like an iot device which will be measuring the indoor pollution so uh, i had uh, seen through certain articles that these kind of air quality monitors are highly used in cities like uh, dalhi mumbai where the pollution is higher so uh, meaning in the community platforms where people stay in like indoor pollution and it leads to improve air quality in houses workplaces and indoor public spaces so it often gives an accurate results is what uh, made this particular food boot air quality monitor to be very reliable so the top feature is it keeps the temperature humidity in check meaning continuous monitoring is done and this supports to increase the lifespan of the users why because it is going to say you about chemical pollutants what are the particles that is present in your environment what is the humidity and temperature if it is not normal it is going to alert you so su such that uh, it is going to uh, you know give a good experience for the users the next is the mobile robot uh this is a mobile robot right now it is available uh, very commercially for the kids to play this is like uh, the mobile robots who uh, you know it is used for the kids who are there in the home without parenting like uh, parents who go for work they use these kind of uh, you know mobile robots where this mobile robot was always go behind the child or the baby once you take the capture and once you make this uh, robot uh, say that you have to uh, run behind it once it is programmed in such a way that you have you are just saying you have to run behind the child this mobile robot will always go and uh, you had an app uh, with this uh, embedded with this mobile robot where uh, uh, when you are in office you can just uh, you know click on and uh, say take a photo of my child it will actually take the real time picture and send you back and it will uh, you know it has wheels it has tracks and legs where it can do few minimal functions uh, in combination with the softwares like ais okay so it move around the environment and do certain functionalities as well so these are like market available examples of iot so this is the next market available product guys but i request you to find out these what this product could be i can give you a hint here for the first picture if you could see here you can see something amazon's uh, logo meaning symbol is here in the other end on your right see there are like famous companies like brands uh, tide bovanti coca cola can somebody guess what this is that would make uh, the session interesting i request you guys to do it yes beepers uh, radha beepers can you just uh, you know give more description on it yes hi janani any issues uh, yes ma no no mehul no okay i'm just looking for uh, certain chat yeah okay okay great so automatic commissions for uh, beverages and amazon assistant great you are somewhere near to 60 percentage ravi yes can anybody just give a try what was it come on guys okay so this is called as amazon dash button which is basically a device that gets connected over internet wifi and make sure that the user does not lack important household items like uh, you could see like soft drinks or uh, grocery materials medical and personal care uh, or kids item or any part pet items over again so if a user wants to fully utilize the dash button they have to subscribe to amazon and they will buy this da dash button then the user must uh, be a prime uh, member kind of uh, subscription has to be done it allows the user to order the products quickly just by clicking that one button which is here see this button which is there so if you click the tight button once your uh, you know detergent powder gets low it will go to your amazon prime account directly and it will order you the quantity which you had subscribed before 
so uh, this is just you don't this is helping you where you don't need to recall the message again and also it also helps to reduce the time frame for searching the required product by the user so amazon dash button also allows the user to reorder from popular brands like uh, you could see bowen t tide or cotton pale glad clorex etc so it does not accept fresh orders but uh, it is like you have to go to amazon prime or some kind of subscription where you have to list out these things are what i'm going to order and this is the quantity so once i'm going to click on this is something you have to do you have to give uh, you know select the options which is mentioned there and it is not uh, complete unless the user allows multiple orders okay this is called as amazon uh, dash button and amazon is actually working for it okay so bringing up uh, you know these kind of dash buttons for all the orders which you make in for example uh, if you are like an um, uh, what i can say uh, if you are like a ing mom or uh, if you are like an uh, you know homemaker who wants these kind of uh, you know grocery items or let it be uh, some kind of household needs or ing mom meaning if you if you are ordering diapers or let it be you know uh, any kind of uh, baby products you will get a dash button for that baby product and just by clicking that one thing it will go and order for you that's the thing guys so yes so getting to our point of interest see uh, from all those things we are just seeing too many devices you know you talk about any field you talk about any kind of product iot will have its application you say any concept you can develop iot application that is where this iot is uh, starting to be the most interesting and happening technology even now okay so uh, basically it is interconnecting of iot devices at any time by anybody by any one any place by any net and by any context it can be a uh, you know two devices one can be medical device one can be household devices where it is connected together so as this field has potential applications the number of iot devices is increasing rapidly and as you could see here the iot healthcare market is forecasted to be worth 2000 200 billions by 2025 so even even with the recession they had came up with Uh, this is the news that is forecasted by market survey from silicon valley so iot technologies have been adopted across the industry where the first prominent technology was healthcare and life sciences and second is consumer and home like amazon dash button or let it be eco plus or q bulbs building management energy utilities industry manufacturing where uh, you know blockchain technologies even they are adopting iot so transportation and logistics retails so all these fields are been one of the you know uh, widely using interconnecting device applications yes so yes right now we are stepping into healthcare what connected medical devices see we told iot is connecting medical devices by connecting medical devices what is something that is different with uh, healthcare because anyways healthcare is about uh, treating or diagnosing diseases for treating and diagnosis we are coming up with different uh, domains like biotechnology uh, let it be life science departments like uh, microbiology pathology b pharm d pharm bds mbs radiology biomedical bioinformatics biogenetics so anything the end to the society is treatment and diagnosis right so what this connecting medical devices is going to be do with so this is going to change the digitization or digital transformation of healthcare so uh, this digitization is currently experiencing an unimagined worldwide push connected devices are now part of many people's everyday life one example i could show you even now i'm wearing a smart watch i hope uh, the participants among you at least uh, you know few countable numbers has to wear the a smart watch or you should have some kind of monitoring system with your smart device so this is where now it has been a part of many people's everyday life which is bringing you know healthcare to your footstep and to your doorstep both in professional and also in private environments so this internet of things provides the technology basis for exploiting the full potential of iot as you could see here one potential application is awareness 
so uh, as these kind of devices are connected together and it is always with you it is like body worn or wearable devices one i told you like smart watch or let it be point care of devices point care of devices means where the patients are there at that point the device will be present and that device will be able to do some kind of treatment or diagnosis those devices are called point of care devices uh, shortly called poc point of care devices okay so glucometer is one uh, application of point of care devices so initially uh, earlier days what we do if if a person with diabetes has to go for a laboratory and give the blood sample do testing at the lab but right now the devices are made portable compact and it is uh, coming to your doorstep so that devices are called point of care devices correct so this development this transformation is bringing awareness about your health awareness about your fitness awareness or educating how you have to travel with your body in the upcoming years one two is prevention might be uh, anybody know how your smart watch is actually monitoring your stress or monitoring your sleep pattern do anybody have any idea so initially if somebody who uses smart watch uh, you could see the graph which is stating this is your sleep pattern this is your emotional analysis stress analysis there are like few very fascinating words which are used by different companies can somebody say me how this is done do you have some sensors for monitoring sleep which is going to see your eyes monitor your retinal movement i don't think it is possible right because you are wearing your watch at your wrist where no focus to your eyes is made so do you know how it is done it is very simple guys what it does is it actually monitors your usage of mobile phone so it actually knows the time so what happens is it knows very well during night we sleep right so it will actually monitor which is the longest duration where you are not using mobile phone that to particularly with night that it will take it as your sleep pattern that time it will take it as your sleep pattern few um, uh, i know few uh, you know devices which will ask when you are sleeping today uh, what was your yesterday's sleep time what was your uh, yesterday's woke up time all those things it will ask it will be like user interaction where you will put in data there are certain watches where uh, you know apps where it will do it in the way as i told you the longest time where you don't access your mobile phone will be considered to be your sleep time or your rest time correct so uh, this is a behavioral analysis or preventive care next is diagnosis might be you know people with chronic diseases uh, right now they don't want to stay in hospital for a longer time so if we come up with some devices which is going to uh, you know do remote health monitoring meaning the patient will be you know embedded with the uh, different medical devices and uh, you know the parameters will be continuously monitor in their home so that they don't want to stay in the hospital see if they are staying in the hospital some caretaker has to be there you know it is like two people's work has changed right now the cost involved is higher so those kind of things can also be done uh, and with the data which we are getting from the devices right we can use it for the future for example let me say you uh, i uh, consider i'm like uh, 30 right now okay i had some kind of uh, consider i had some kind of heart issue so when i'm going to be 45 and i'm making sure that my data my heart rate data on day to day basis is been stored somewhere in the cloud and i uh, some kind of analytics is also done so after 15 years of time actually i can you know uh, the doctor it is not i the doctor can actually predict see this is your lifestyle change you are doing in this is your you know health condition for past 15 years and he can make his uh, you know treatment and diagnosis in a very accurate way this is one potential application the next is treatment as i told you for chronic disease patients instead of staying in uh, staying in hospitals the treatment can be done in the remote or in their home home based care can be 
done patient compliances can be given so it it is also the other way useful for the hospitals where uh, the monitoring and the maintaining after uh, during the treatment and after uh, some surgery or some kind of interventions medical abnormality interventions it will be easy for the doctors perspective as well just uh, they can just open their mobile if they had 50 such patients they can see the statistics of the patients the app can say see there is some uh, variation with per um you know person c uh, you just see it so that the doctor will open c's record and he will do a detailed study a kind of thing even that detailed study what he is writing you in the uh, the other end you can just open and take his prescriptions as well so this connected medical device is actually bringing up new health care models okay so we are stepping into what internet of things is doing with health care so internet of things uh, you know iot in healthcare is a subset that focuses on uh, you know connected medical devices and wearables to collect analyze share data related to health and wellness i think i think it is clear so iot includes a wide range of devices such as fitness trackers as i told you smart watches blood pressure monitors glucose monitors pacemakers and more so iot in healthcare is one of the it is becoming one of the important applications and the area of thirst for today's life great so uh, before getting into details or technical aspects of iot i just want you to understand two different things how the healthcare was working in a traditional way or in a conventional way and what it is right now which we are witnessing and we, which we are experiencing the first picture which is in gray is your traditional healthcare model so if you could see this picture you had two persons the one is doctor because he is wearing stethoscope and his uh, dressings are like that right so he is a doctor the opposite is a patient so the patient is actually you know uh, uh, aching his uh, head to explain what is happening with them to the doctor so initially what happens in traditional days it was like when a patient is or when a person is intervened with some diseases or some abnormality he reaches the doctor and doctor do the diagnosis and treatment this is how a traditional healthcare model was in right now because they are having wearable system or smart watch kind of uh, uh, applications where the wellness of the persons are continuously monitored or it is 24 bar 7 the wellness of the person is monitored such that any kind of abnormality or any kind of disease intervention can be prevented earlier or early diagnosis of such diseases if it is heart attack then early diagnosis can be done and treatment can be made possible for example consider uh, see uh, in today's life most of us we are getting into cities leaving our native places right so that time we had our own elderly people at home who are not well obviously when they are elderly they are not well they need some kind of attention towards their health so consider uh, they are they are wearing some wearable devices where it is going to monitor their vital parameters like ecg pulse spo2 um yeah are uh, these these parameters okay so if something goes wrong or if some kind of emergency is required think that iot device will uh, send the data to a nearby hospital and to us as well so that the hospital can prepare for the emergency and it can send the ambulance to rush out to rescue the patient so this is how new health care model is transforming and we are experience it uh, experiencing it as well so if you see the traditional healthcare model as i told you only once the patient is getting the disease he gets to the doctor he do diagnosis treatment done come to home that's it but here in your new healthcare model the wellness is continuously monitored and it uh, because of continuous monitoring we had too many advantages like uh, early detection or prevention from certain diseases and diagnosis can be done easily and treatment can be done it is like a cyclic way it is like a cycle it is like 24 bar 7 monitoring so this is with respect to traditional and new healthcare model guys so yes so this 
IoT apparently now we can say is direct way that digital health is transforming healthcare such that it is giving us improved patient experience, increase quality of care, improve access to care, reduce inefficiency and cost. So earlier it is like getting to multiple specialty hospital was a bigger task. Then the day, day comes in where uh, getting, you know, access was uh, issue then cost was issue then it was like even if you are getting there uh, you know book if you are if if you are not well and you need some kind of inpatients uh, uh, internal patients are called as ip if you need a books book a room space it was not that easy but trying right now with this digital health you know it it will be as easy like booking a cinema ticket just just imagine guys if you want to book a cinema ticket we had n number of apps where you can just log in you can just see the seats which is required for you and you can book in consider if you have some kind of diseases you cannot even choose which is the best doctor how much time i can go and just you don't have such apps commercially even then if you have some docs app medmeds and few apps but they are not that efficient right it is not that easy like how you're booking the tickets so it is that pathetic and digital health and iot is transforming that particular condition guys for sure yes okay so iot devices uh, you know it uh, in the applications from iot devices include telemedicine telemedicine i think you are uh, aware of tele is uh, far distance it is like you do uh, you know you do testing here and you send your reports to uh, somebody else in the other remote place and you get suggestion from them or remote monitoring can be done via iot might be as i told you we are in cities where we can show our elders uh, uh, data their healthcare data and we can get consult with the doctor or healthcare analytics can be done as i told you 30 years i am and if i had heart problem at 45 my data can can be used for my diagnosis and treatment and with the mobile you can monitor your de devices and everything is will be in a digital format where you can open it use it anywhere anytime from your cloud or from your local server yes with this digital healthcare data let it, so any data which is coming from the person it is called as medical data which is called as patient health record that pa pa if you are taking that patient health record and if you are going to do some kind of analysis in that patient health record it is going to be called as data analytical system if you're going to combine patient health record plus data analytical system it is going to give a greater insights for the healthcare system so right now our healthcare industry is focusing for these activities to happen see uh, earlier days or even now even in multi-speciality hospitals right they used to write it in a paper instead they are trying to put it in an uh, you know uh, in in an uh, electronic way such that for this particular disease or for, for this particular symptom this kind of medicine is given for you this is the age of the personality all these things we will state in such that you know we can actually you know stop uh, you know deaths or mor mor mortality because of uh, wrong medicines wrong prescription wrong diagnosis and this is one way the other way uh, we can see by for this particular disease when i'm giving this particular medicine is going to be a hit it it has a 70 percentage of efficiency 80 percentage of efficacy what we had seen during covid times covaxin is having this efficacy um or uh, the other uh, Pfizer is having this efficacy. We were able to come up with some numbers. These numbers are got it from the patient health record where we are analyzing uh, or we are coming up with some knowledge on that raw data. That insight is what that numbers are in. So this is where the healthcare IoT system is focusing towards. So let us get into the technical fronts of IoT. So guys, this is like a basic workflow of IoT systems. So as you could see on the first call, IoT consists of smart devices. It can be devices you use in day-to-day -day life or it can be a smart TV as you could see here or a washing machine, mobile, car or they, anything. If it is IMOT, medical things, it could be different uh, physiological sensors here which will be connected to the gateway. 
okay and from the gateway it is connected to the cloud from the cloud it is away uh, from the cloud it is connected to a end device where the report and analysis are generated so based on the data in the reports the analysis is performed to curate in a fine way the smart devices send data to the gateway from the sensors so the gateway is a centralized hub that will connect the iot devices and sensors to the cloud based computing module so to make it into a simple way to 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 you to understand it connects devices with iot okay to another cloud or translating commu communication between uh, the smart devices and it is giving the information to the cloud applications got it so this is your basic iot working so the most required components here are you require sensors you require gateways network devices to connect this sensors to the cloud you need cloud applications it is totally with the iot software end where the you know you implement artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithms to do healthcare data analytics or predictive analysis kind of application so that we get some insights from the health data okay this is the basic iot working guys in the same way only our smart watch works Con uh, in our smart watch we had sensors like you had spo2 sensor pulse sensor uh, uh, which is going temperature sensor which is going to monitor those parameters those parameters will be sent to your mobile phone via bluetooth which is a very short uh, range communication from the bluetooth uh, okay it will be stored in your mobile phone from the mobile phone using the cellular data in the mobile phone it will be sent to the cloud okay so now it is with your cellular data communication here in the cloud as i told you there will be some firmware or link application there will be a some uh, kind of ai or ml algorithms which will be you know analyzing the data which is coming in and that data will be analyzed and the report will be either stored in the local server or it will be given to your caretaker once the caretaker is reviewing the data he can send the feedback to the cloud that can be communicated back to the smartwatch as well even that model is also possible yes guys so this is about basics of iot and how iot is working with healthcare example a smartwatch application here i wish to add few points guys so by implementing this iot you know it is making uh, many advantages uh, what are the benefits means it is like decreasing the resources say if i have a smart uh, uh, a smart hospital kind of applications where i had 15 patients who are with glucose or diabetes so think i'm having an invasive non uh, no, uh, in, uh, non invasive glucose monitoring device or non invasive continuous glucose monitoring device so it think it is like your uh, smart watch it is going to monitor the glucose think if i have 50 patients in my hands and i can actually monitor uh, them on a days uh, on a daily basis right so with minimal resources i can actually do second is it reduces the time and the complexity third is uh, since human effort and interventions are very minimized it saves lot of time and also it can utilize the resources saved for any other usage in hands for example if a doctor wants to see 20 patients today by see monitoring uh, the patients the patients don't want to come to the hospital anyways doctor will send the feedback via phone that would uh, you know reduce the time uh, of uh, you know consulting with the patients to the doctor even for the patients they have to get ready they have to come to the hospital right it is going to be a greater deal suppose if i implement ai in cloud where all uh, devices are efficiently and effectively controlled and maintained then think chronic disease management wellness um, everything can be made easily with respect to healthcare so uh the one most important thing is data security and uh, data uh, privacy so we should make sure our data is not breaching anywhere out this is one thing guys so i wish to talk about few uh, things here where i don't know other departments are concerned about but being uh, talking about 
medical data we are supposed to talk about two things guys so as i told you uh, from the watch the data is going to send to the mobile phone uh, uh, generally if if some biomedical engineers are there or if somebody who is related to medical technology or healthcare technology or clinical engineers because this uh, boot camp is actually catering wide variety of participants it can be students it can be people who want uh, like working professionals etc so people who know uh, you know uh, medical technology or healthcare we know that your biomedical signals are very very less in potential so the amplitude of waves or the energy of way uh, the energy of the signal which we are getting from this particular uh, you know sensors will be very 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 less the current will be very very less to put it in a simple term okay what happens is in that very less current we will get more noise meaning if you have 1 volt of current sorry 1 volt of uh, signal from the sensor in that 1 volt 10 millivolt only it will be the required signal the other 90 millivolts no it will be noise for example um ecg signal you had a common noise called as baseline bandering in emg signal you had power line interference noises it can be noises due to ground so these kind of noises will be added to your biopotential signal so it is very hard for a embedded engineer or an, a design engineer who is there in the hardware side he has to come up with some kind of filtering techniques where he does some internal processing okay before he is going to send it to cloud i will say uh, you just want to ask me janani why should you do internal processing take the da data chata send to the cloud no guys i will say you why we cannot do it and it is very complex i will say you why see as i told you healthcare data is a very very mandatory that it should be continuous monitoring data why continuous monitoring data been we cannot say when you get heart attack we cannot say when is that immediate moment uh, where you have a collapse correct when you will have a uh, you know a abnormality so uh, uh, the real time uh, you know in the real time it should be 24 bar 7 monitoring and there should not be any delay from sending the data from the watch to the mobile phone correct there should be there should be no jitency or latency guys so the jitter time should be zero practically what hap because it is healthcare data and is it is related to the life of the patients right so it should be very 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 minimal what think has to be considered is, as i told you if it is with more amount of noise it is like you are sending less amount of information and more amount of noise so if you have some kind of filters uh, internal processes which is going to filter then it is going to be a great deal but this is something very difficult where many engineers are putting their brains to do it guys this is one area where you as a engineers can uh, you know step into your um, uh, the field and bring a ground breaking application the second is once you send to the mobile phone even then from the mobile phone again cellular data you have to upload those many datas real time streaming has to be there it is 24 bar 7 streaming has to be there again that is going to be the other complex area where we have to see uh, you are getting high volume of data it is going to be big data right now with this high volume of data how you are going to store this data where you are going to store this data so if i need some information how i am going to retrieve it is all going to be in vain if you get high volume of data so it would be better if you actually do some internal processing you do minimal kind of processing and then only you send the data to the cloud in the cloud proper processing will done and it will do analytics guys so this is how a general iot in healthcare works so you will have sensors which will acquire the parameters and because biomedical signals or biopotential signals or with high amount of noise and less in energy we have to actually filter these noises so internally or minimally we do some processing and then only we will send it to cloud in the cloud external processing will happen in a massive level so in there we will have some analytical system where the analysis will be done in the filtered signal and we come up with some knowledge or clinical decision support information so that data either it will be stored in the local server or in the cloud or it will be given to the caretaker uh, for their 
notification this is about the basic working of iot guys to elaborate this is what iomt means anything that is related to uh, patients or healthcare records or medical then it is called as internet of medical things okay so this is the architecture of internet of medical things as you could see here consider this is a patient with very good laughing face if you could see here some dots are kept and near the dots it is like labeled 1 2 3 4 5 and all right so uh, these are called as sensor nodes wherever you are placing the sensors no in uh, Uh, iot with uh, healthcare we call it a sensor nodes so the the patient here from different sensors different parameters will be monitored consider 1 2 4 3 uh, is your uh, uh, ecg signal okay you are taking the ecg signal this could be something like your walk or accelerometer signal okay meaning your uh, a location tracker kind of thing where that data is taken and it is sent to the gateway so in the gateway you collect the data from the sensors and you do minimal processing from the gateway you send it to cloud application in the cloud application data analytics will happen with respect to ai or ml algorithms or general algorithms from the inference or from the data which is generated from the cloud application it will be sent to the expert doctor for his verification and validation or otherwise it will be sent to the nurse for the better patient care or it will be sent to the emergency in case of emergency so that the ambulatory services can rush to this particular location and rescue the patient from a critical situation consider a elderly patient as actually had fallen down due to he falling down he or she falling down he he got scared and their heart beat is totally abnormal now in that condition in this particular application ecg is also monitored fall will be also detected using accelerometer the fifth sensor that data will be immediately sent to the cloud and it will be analyzed and it will be sending an alert to the expert doctor nurse and the ambulatory services such that this ambulant will go to this particular location and it will rescue the patients so in this you can realize as i told you before you don't here in with respect to medical or healthcare data there is no word of uh, you know delay because consider if the delay is more than 3 uh, 4 minutes then having this system will be waste right for in in that condition so uh, 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 in uh, with regards to medical data analytics or with regards to iot which is used for healthcare the latency has to be very less uh, in the critical situations if the latency is there then the total architecture is going to be a failure model so in uh, considering all these parameters only this total architecture will be frameworked guys even it could be hardware even it could be software let it be cloud applications we will make it in such a way that there is less latency okay so instead of using some kind of remote stations here if you are using mobile then it is called as mobile health care guys which is uh, which is you know the buzzword is m health care so mobile iot or m iot uses mobile computing or mobile sensors uh, right now with the sensors uh, with the mobile phone temperature monitoring is there bp monitoring is there pulse monitor just keep your finger on the mobile phone in a particular spot such that it will monitor your uh, your pulse and your temperature and uh, i i had seen one example in an it company where uh, in the mouse right uh, near to the mouse where you keep your thumb thumb finger right there the pulse sensor is there whenever you get nervous it will be displaying to your manager that see this fellow is getting nervous take care of him or this fellow is getting nervous frequently take care of him even these kind of applications few it companies who are, who are like thinking about their employees they are getting in guys so uh, the, these kind of mobile applications can track patients health and other physiological parameters anytime anywhere so uh, these kind of uh, you know applications which is concerning about the person or the personal it is called as personal area networks or mobile networks because this network is for that particular dedicated to that particular function person right it could be 4g 5g cellular data so it is it can be called as personal area network so if somebody says what is iomt what is uh, body area network what is mobile healthcare it is all the same or personal area network it is all the same it is going to monitor a individual's health record or it could be a internet 
internet based health services okay so mobile iot has made iot based healthcare services more accessible to the practitioners who can access the patient data diagnose and provide treatment at the right time so same like your iomt you had sensor you had gateway mobile will be the gateway here you had a communication protocol it could be long range communication it could be short range communication and from that you will have cloud cloud to hospital nurse emergency this is your mobile health guys as i told you wireless uh, sensor network is again another word or you have to just understand what it is so wireless ne sensor network and wireless body area networks w band which is said here right these are one and the same see if you could see this picture here you could see 1 2 3 4 5 these are like i told you these are like sensors these sensors they are not interconnected if you could see they are wirelessly connected correct so they are the if the sensors are wirelessly connected and different sensors are monitoring different parameters then it is called as wireless sensor network so the sensor will be spatially distributed in the patient's body as you could see here so the spatial distribution the sensor will act autonomous and it will monitor the physical or environmental parameters and all these all these sensors they will not have any interconnection they are wireless they are spatially distributed all these sensors will send the uh, acquired data to the coordinator or sync node from the coordinator or the sync node it will be sending the data to the remote station can you imagine how beautiful the technology has given in if you want to monitor your eye if you want it is called uh, retinogram if you want want to monitor your um, stomach uh, uh, like a gastrogram if you want to monitor your knee activity or vibration who are having foot pain uh, you can have a sensor there or a electrode there it is like they don't have connections they are wirelessly distributed and they will acquire the data and they will give it to a single node which is called as coordinator or a sync, a sync node from here the data will be sent to the remote station in the remote station only all the processing will be done and the data some uh, information will be generated out of the data which is collected by the sensors and it will be sent to the caretaker so you had uh, different layers in wireless sensor network the first layer is sensor the second layer where all the sensor are coordinating to the coordinator or sync layer it is called as processing layer from the sync or coordinating layer it will be wired connection which is called as communication layer from the wired connection it is sent to the application here you will have an app or a software where uh, this data will be analyzed and uh, report will be generated this layer is called as application layer so i repeat the base layer is sensor layer where you get the raw data out of the sensors the data will be processed in the coordinator layer or all the spatially distributed electrodes or sensors will be connected to this particular sync node from the particular sync node it will be wired connected to the remote station so communication layer and application layer are as follows so the communication will be bidirectional as well so this is called as wireless sensor network so example of wireless sensor network is the same thing if you could see see different parameters are connected and the data is sent to the mobile if it is a mobile health or it will be sent to the uh, normal network devices like routers repeaters regenerators bridges and from there it will be connecting to the web meaning cloud from the cloud the data will be analyzed and it will be sent to the caretakers emergency services or hospital wherever it is required so it is same so as i told you body area network sensor network uh, internet of medical things or one and the same if you are going to use mobile then it is called as mobile health that's the only difference we had so all these buzzwords comes to a single point where you are collecting data from the sensors and you are sending to the cloud and you are taking the data uh, um, you know you are getting analytics from the cloud so i just uh, missed out a few points here so uh, there is one interesting story related to this wireless sensor network what happens is this uh, at this particular uh, you know a, a idea of you know distributing sensors widely and getting the information was uh, you know first created by us army for military applications uh, for for things in the battlefield in battlefield they take too many equipments right in order to see where these equipments are placed 
or see the location uh, they had come up with this wireless sensor network guys so it would provide monitoring of enemy assets monitoring our own equipments or monitoring where our uh, nbc uh, warfare agents are monitoring the soldiers uh, these for these applications they had come up with this wireless sensor network guys so this wireless uh, sensor network will monitor the real time parameters uh, or it could be a physical conditions like temperature vibration motion ecg emg anything uh, so the sensor node could have behave both as a data Uh, you know acquis uh, acquiring the data and routing the data to the sync node from the sync node it goes to the remote station so once this military application was finalized then they thought we can uh, it, it it has potentially good application it did, and it is a very great idea and they thought to use this wireless sensor network to the industry production uh, or automation industry such that where this wireless sensor network idea was get into medical as well so all this time we were talking about uh, and uh, how what is the process flow the same again comes here see the fitness tracker your your uh, smart tracker or let it be uh, some kind of socks we, you are wearing where it will track your fitness anything so your user will be there from the user uh, you will have sensors in that wearable device where the person is owning some device or wearing some device from that device the sensors will be there which will be monitoring the daily activity food consumption fitness activity and the sleep pattern via the smart watch here from the smart watch it is sent to the mobile phone via bluetooth so depending upon the application the designer may choose short range or long range communication wired or wireless communication any kind of communication uh, can be chosen by the designer so to your uh, notification uh, the most enabling or most required technology or heart of iot system is communication guys if you establish good communication between two devices then it's a great deal it is like 70 percentage complete with your iot prototype from mobile phone as i explained to you before via wifi it goes to cloud data are generated data are monitored and which the data will be displayed back in the mobile phone for the user to see what is happening with their body so all this time i was saying uh, 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 like uh, you know we had something called as wireless area network uh, you had internal processing external processing i told you why internal processing is required because we cannot send too many data so it will take time in medical uh, in iot in healthcare time or delay is not at all accepted all these things i told you uh, uh, in the same way you have to understand what will be there inside the smart watch or a device which is placed near to the patient or near to the person i am saying you all this time there will be a sensor which will be getting the data and it will be doing the local processing you have to understand what exactly is there in that point so if you could see it will be like this it is not the it, i had just come up with the generic block diagram for the sensor node so this particular competence will be near to the body surface or your skin surface so the sensor nodes will be very tiny devices that sense condition digitize and process the physiological physical environmental parameters there will be a battery as you see as you could see to operate the sensor node and it is like rechargeable and you will have a gps uh, tracker as you could see to find the locations of the sensors and you can have the actuators for giving any feedback you had wireless transceivers at the last for data to communicate to the coordinator node or a sync node as i told you here if you sorry see here first the sensor node then it, this is the sync node see this is the sensor node which is near to the person sync node where the wireless sensors will be connected to the sync node so sync node will contain these components guys so in the sync node again you had a microcontroller and the sync node the main purpose is it is going to coordinate and control all the sensor node the sync node will receive data from the sensors as i told you and the data from the sensors are collected and processed in the sync node so uh, in order to process only we had this microcontroller after processing after filtering out noises uh, the data will be transmitted to the remote station using the wireless transceiver okay the sync node has minimal inputs and has an option to display the data 
and for doing all this process we need energy for that you had a battery in order to process and in order to have the program we need some memory uh, that's where uh, you know you had microcontroller which will be having flash memory will be used now after from the sensor node the data will be sent to the sync node after sync node the data is sent to the remote station yes clear right so what will happen now in the remote station so in the remote monitoring station uh, uh, the uh, the data will be collected uh, either wired or wirelessly the data will be connected and analysis will be performed in the station analysis meaning first they do processing in processing first they will filter out noises then they will take the useful information they will see what are goods and goals for example if it is an ecg or if it is a temperature what is the minimal and maximum threshold required they will see so with the application services if anything goes wrong that will alert if there are any abnormal parameters or otherwise the data will be stored internally and the health of each uh, wireless body area system including the sensors can be monitored uh, and uh, from here uh, the data can be displayed in this application and so that the person who is wearing the device can see see this is what happening with my body so this is the total of wireless body area network guys so wireless sensor network is a generic terminology if if wireless sensor network is dedicatedly used for healthcare application then it is called as wireless body area networks okay so uh, next we are coming up with the other uh, you know application which is smart hospital space this is a kind of applications different types of uh, you know features when you when you have iot uh, in this hospital so if you if you if you have an iot ecosystem in the hospital then it is called as smart hospital okay so uh, before introduction of iot in healthcare industry communication communicating base with the doctor as i told you in traditional model it was very difficult it was time consuming etc there was no text based or video conferencing etc now with iot and healthcare is expanding rapidly all these video conferencing or text based or continuous monitoring everything has been possible with power of technology uh if you could see here see remote health monitoring is possible where dot the doctor will be in one city you will be at another city where your uh, with wearable devices you can monitor the health and the doctor can actually see it in their uh, host system or uh, medication intact tracking can be done in the hospital space might be doctor can sit in his room and you can be in your ward and the data can be monitored the uh, usually medication intact like this uh, you know near to the patient there will be a notepad where the uh, nurses will come and write 11 o'clock i gave this medicine 12 o'clock i gave this medicine so uh, think uh, if the doctor or the handwriting of the nurses are not good or there is some kind of ambiguity uh, it is going to uh, you know uh, decrease the eff efficiency of the treatment right if if it is going going to be a medi uh, if it is going to be an electronic record where it is going to connect where this medicine the medicine will be taken from the pharmacy this medicine taken from the pharmacy at 10:30 is being injected to this person so that you know for the <laughs> management the finance is easily managed the process flow is easily monitored for the patient the track the medication tracking can be done even same with the drug tracking next smart hospital uh, space as i told you booking an inpatient uh, maybe one can require a deluxe room one can require a ac room one can require a general ward any ward right so uh, instead of a person sitting and waiting for hours and hours in a multi speciality hospital they can easily have an app or an iot system where they can book uh, their rooms if if a doctor is asking the patient to be an inpatient or they need some kind of care from the hospital then the the most most happening thing is medical inventory and equipment tracking see most of the times when you see in emergency wards no people will, will be rushing here and there uh, when we sit as an audience we will be under the impression see because they are treating with emergency people they are like very busy it is not that uh, when when an emergency comes in they will not able to uh, you know track certain equipments which are required for that emergency in that case only they will be running here and there tracking for the equipments so um, almost with all the devices we had portable devices we had portable ecg portable uh, uh, you know 
defibs everything so the thing is no we will keep somewhere some nurse who is in the morning duty will keep it somewhere the person who is coming with some emergency in the evening and the nurse who is in the evening duty they may not know where the morning duty person had kept even then there is certain rules and regulations see uh, human error is uh, negligible and it is inevitable right so inevitable errors in that condition consider if you put an rfid tagger or a barcode tagger where uh, in our malls and all they will put for the uh, uh, products right if you had a barcode or if you had a near field uh, uh, tag or if you had an rfid tag where um, uh, that particular location will be tracked in the nearby environment wifi so that we can track that object or rfid we can track that object we can easily uh, point out where the device is and in the worst case recently we had seen in the news that see the baby who is inside the baby cradle has gone theft so baby theft is uh, you know even now it is prevailing in the, our modern scenario for that if you have some kind of security control and iot tracking system then that is a great deal no so you had potential applications guys as i told you before you say anything you will you can develop an iot product or prototype for that potential application so having talked many things about iot in healthcare uh, you know and applications overview why it is required what it is actually impacting what are the benefits what are the impact one what is its healthcare requirement one is mobility i can say around the clock coverage and monitoring of patients medical condition is possible with iot meaning continuous monitoring is possi possible no longer the patient has to confine in a particular place like if a patient is with uh, some kind of disease they 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 do not want to go to hospital sit there for a longer time they do not want to sit in a house for a longer time they can wear a device they can go for their work they can live their normal life correct one is about mobility two is about preventive medicine so preventive medicine meaning before it comes in the preventive or proactive actions or approach can be taken with help of monitoring uh, you know around the clock or 24 bar 7 a uh, real time access can be possible so as i told you in one condition where elderly people are at home when a fall is been detected or when an heart attack is been detected um, it can alert to the nearby ambulatory services so that the nearby ambulatory services can rush to that particular field correct so these are like Uh, you know potential applications for healthcare guys with uh, these healthcare applications it is bringing in efficient disease diagnosis personal care is possible elderly care is possible fitness management is possible chronic disease management is possible uh, patient safety will be improved and cost for healthcare will be reduced accessible can be uh, access to healthcare services can be increased and operational efficiency for both doctor and the patient can be also increased i think these points are direct and you can i had explained to you before many times and you can understand it straight away so this is the workflow the picture shows the workflow so the patients will be either it could be the image of a patient or signals of the patient where it will be displayed and the data will be collected and it will be sent to the gateway so as i told you a gateway will be a network device that network device will be connecting to the cloud the network from the network the analysis will be taken after the analysis the data will be generated and it will be stored internally or the data will be uh, given to the physician for the display it could be video conferencing it could be telemedicine it could be 24 bar 7 uh, physiological parameter monitoring anything so this is like a generic workflow so in the doctor's end it will be like see ribaka this particular person a female who is like 67 years old with uh, what is the height and weight it is her blood pressure it is her heart rate Uh, it is her recent activities this could be you know uh, uh, this could be appearing as a dashboard in the patient's end as well as the doctor end if there is an uh, uh, alert system either in the uh, in the phone now it came no either in the phone there can be an alert or to the doctor there can be a alert so actually in near future within couple of years uh, we are actually you know witnessing to see these kind of dashboards which appear on our end and it should be very much commercialized 
yes so uh, all this time we were talking about generic applications guys so i would uh, like to share you few other applications where uh, developed countries like uh, uh, us are coming up with one is ambient assisted living uh ambient assisted living basically iot is used for assisting aged people as you, as you could see in the picture one aged person is there to live independently at home because in india we had certain culture of living where we live in groups whereas in developed countries and even in india with modernization we are not living in groups right so they are we are living independently and at home and we need some kind of confinement to the convenience and safety so here in assisted living it is possible to monitor the activity of the individuals the environmental parameters vitals can be actually monitored if you could see the sensors are placed in everywhere of the house so the total house will be instrumented with the sensors where it will be continuously monitoring the environment this is to transmit the healthcare profession to take decision making automatically so this picture uh, this is like a typical uh, uh, ambient assisted living uh, so completely automated or completely instrumented with the sensors wherein an elderly person who is under health monitoring is continuously monitored these sensors are wearable sensors and integrated into clothing integrated uh, so they are all in the form of wearables here if you could see integrated in the walls here if you could see it is integrated in the windows here if you could see it is integrated in the bed it is integrated in the toilet seats correct it is integrated in the floors etc so uh, all these sensors are instrumented in the total house so that everything is monitored so the individual is constantly monitored based on the motion vibration pressure along with the vital parameters so for example if a fall detection happens the accelerometer or a gyroscope uh, will give that alert and emergency will be rushed to soon for help for the treatment so uh, this particular uh, thing no uh, there are certain companies who is uh, totally taking care of you know uh, installing the sensors and monitoring the elderly persons okay so uh, it is the uh, it is the next generation's duty or their sons or daughter duty just to pay that uh, company and they will take care rest of this elderly persons at home this is one particular thing which is happening or currently uh, happening right now the next is health monitoring of elderly patients i can say this is straight away here if you could see this elderly person he is embedded with different sensor as you could see ecg sensor heart rate blood temperature body temperature oxygen saturation these sensors will be there which will be uh you know uh, sending the data to the mobile from from the mobile phone uh, uh, via the cellular communication it is sent to the internet where the expert uh, clinical decision making is done using the algorithms and the data or the information is sent either to the emergency home clinician or uh, to the ambulatory services depending upon the situation so in case of chronic condition which cannot be treated but monitored uh, in such conditions these patients or these elderly persons they do not want to confine to a particular particular hospital or in a particular uh, uh, care taking uh, environment rather they can sit at their home and they can monitor their uh, parameters like uh, ecg hr temperature spo2 as it is mentioned here so that uh, continuous monitoring and it will be ease for the uh, uh, care takers as well as it will be happy for the persons uh, patients as well so this is the other example guys so uh, the next technology which we are going to discuss is personal health care system which is your wearable sensor as you could see in the uh, uh, the picture you could see a small round uh, you know patch so that patch is actually uh, minimally invasive you will have micro needles very micro needles it it will be like ant biting you you will just pinch that you will stick that micro needle onto your arm where glucose sensors will be there uh, i told you you will have micro needles no that micro needles will be interacting with the blood and it will be sensing the glucose in your blood and that glucose level will be monitored in the device this is a this is like a dedicated device for glucose monitoring here see the statistics is displayed this is called wearable devices guys so this is where the total uh, you know healthcare market is running behind you know 
creating a personal health or creating wellness for the individuals or creating a wearable devices where the total market is running behind so uh, by 2050 over 20 percentage of the population in us is estimated to be above 65 so it is going to become one of the <laughs> you know old or senior uh, citizen filled country so possible consequence if that uh, more senior citizens in a country uh, are there one there should be acute shortage of medical professionals number of doctors to take care of that persons will be less the second could be a decline in quality of medical care and increase in cost so in order to avoid everything in or in order to increase their healthcare efficiency they thought they can come up with wearable technology so wearable technology is nothing but the person is going to wear a electronic gadget where that gadget is going to monitor their health parameter the health parameter can be ecg emg accelerometer insole ankle spo2 emg anything any health care parameter can be monitored so the person i told he will be wearing some gadget right so these wearable devices uh, will be in the form of shirt or it could be in a form of jacket socks a band a watch a ring anything so these would be like washable and you can uh, it will be having array of sensors which will be monitoring the physiological parameters and those parameters will be sent wirelessly to the remote station so the data will be collected and can be correlated to produce an overall picture of users health so this is the architecture of wearable health monitoring system guys so uh, it it is same like your it, uh, iot in healthcare architecture as you could see you will have sensors sensors will be acquiring vital parameters from the patients from the sensors it will be sent to the hardware in the hardware the minimal processing will be done i told you why processing in that the internal processing is done in order to uh, filter out the noises and after filtering out the data will be wired lastly transmitted to the remote station so in the remote station it will receive the data and it will do some classifying algorithms like normal or abnormal and it will display the data this is the architecture of wireless uh, wireless health monitoring systems or wearable systems so see you will have a wearable hardware from the wearable hardware it is sent to the remote station this is the architecture so these uh, devices these wearable devices will be available in a various form either it will be a google glass either it will be a wrist band it will be a socks it will be a headphone it can be a helmet where the uh, it could be a jacket it could be a pant it could be a inner garments where the data will be monitored so the major uh, you know uh, uh, the purpose of using these wearable devices or monitoring your daily activity heart rate your trend your sleep your calories your muscle activity stress and um, uh, emotions which will say about your cognitive functions movement patterns sweat analysis sleep so if i'm going to be an athlete my sweat analysis my cognitive function movement pattern breathing rate oxygen heart rate is important so anyways these three parameters it is important for anybody if if consider if i if i am a patient after post surgery so my cognitive function stress muscle electrical activity and these parameters are to be monitored consider if i am an insomnia patient insomnia meaning the person who will not get sleep right so it is it is important to monitor their stress cognitive function and their sleep correct so depending upon the type of application you have to design your wearable device so uh generally wearable device will be monitoring the parameters as i told you depending upon what whom you are going to give that uh, device you have to monitor the first is for astronauts correct so generally these electronics uh, as i told you these sensors will be put inside a cloth and it will be called as smart textiles because it is holding some electronics and it is doing some activity that's why it is called as smart textiles so smart textiles basically they can sense they can react and they can adapt to the conditions around them so if you are not able to come up with wireless sensor network you will have the conducting wires so in the in the dress only you know the the threads they are using in the dress to fabricate right that thread will be conductive threads so that from the sensors uh, via that conductive thread it will go to the device you don't want to need wireless uh, uh, sensors
or wireless communication protocol is not required the textiles inside the fabric inside the textile only they will act as a conductive yarn so for example they can uh, actually uh, you had t-shirts and garments when it is cold it will be white color when it is hot it will be in blue color for light it will uh, change for pressure for moisture for time uh, there are smart textiles uh, fabricated in order to indicate those parameters this is when smart fabrics have micro so bearable uh, electronics or bearable devices means smart fabrics having micro electronics built inside their structures okay so that is called smart textiles so generally wearable will be monitoring physiological parameter if you are going to design and wearable a sensor for astronauts we have to think it in a way see astronaut is going to go to the space where microgravity will be there so the reduction in mortality and morbidity rates has to be taken into account the enhancement of force effectiveness by reducing the life likelihood has to be uh, taken so considering where that person and what that person is doing the physiological monitoring will be done if it is a shoal just consider it is a shoal just for india they are in kashmir which is like extreme uh, climate so you have to do the wearable sensor in such a way that that particular device is working in very low temperatures also that is a condition if you are going to do for a firefighter so uh, they will be uh, dealing with fire so it will be extreme hot climate so uh, hot temperature they are facing in so your wearable device should be in a position like uh, it is working well in that extreme hot condition so if a patient is chronic or if 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 an elderly person is there or mentally retarded persons are there you can come up with the sensors where it is instrumented in all the day to day uh, you know objects they are using let it be pillow if a person is with insomnia in order to check their breathing rate a breath sensor can be kept in the pillow in the bed there can be some kind of sensors kept in the sofas in the car like uh, might be ecg sensors can be monitored so these are like uh, different applications guys so as i told you anything you come up with you can built in iot system point to be noted us army is providing an uh, uh, you know a jacket where iot uh, uh, system or iot application is embedded and this is fabricated by georgia university and actually us army the people are wearing it okay so next uh, it will be somewhere different other than what we had explained this is also a wearable multi parameter monitoring it is somewhere different the first as you could see you are seeing the hands where different sensors are there i had put it is haptics you know what is haptics like it is like touch and feel so uh, you had uh, iot applications in haptics i will say you how haptics use specialized hardware to provide sensory feedback that simulates the physical properties and forces so for a people who are in coma for a longer time and for people who uh, had some kind of uh, you know an accident uh, and all uh, they are not able to stand and sit they are like bedridden we can provide these kind of touch sensory uh, sensors where automatically you know their nerves will be simulated and how much it is simulated how long it can be done everything can be coded the second is for rehabilitation the person after post surgery or who are like injured you know they have to give some physiotherapy for that physiotherapy in order to check how much the muscle is moving how much the force the person is able to apply in day 1 in day 10 in day 100 uh, what is their emotional status by eeg what is their muscle status by emg what how what is the walking stand strand meaning the pattern of walk you call it a strand in biomechanics so what is their robot of walking all these parameters can be instrumentally monitored if you are being and that parameter when can be sent to the doctor who had done surgery and who is supervising right now so this physio it will be easy for the physiotherapist as well as for the patients themselves so physical medicine along with rehabilitation will be an effective in restoring the functional ability of patients with iot incorporating with the rehabilitation so with haptics right uh, uh, 
uh, some european country they had come up with uh, uh, you know a device uh, or a, or a kind of uh, you know a wearable device where for the children with autism right for the children with autism it will be interacting with the children it will because uh, it will be giving the feel for the children like a touch and feel for the kids virtual hugs for the kids so that uh, the persons who are in the early stages of uh, autism they can come up uh they can be easily rectified okay these are like a, the third thing i put in pandemic so we saw what covid had bring in us no touch no physical things and also if some iot technology is incorporated in the hospital then it's a great deal right the nurses or doctors they can sit in their workstations the patient in their um, ward and we can monitor the parameters uh, even right now i had seen in few hospital iv based uh, you know um, Uh, iot based iv uh, glucose uh, thing has been installed or implemented the next most uh, you know uh, prevailing disease in india is one is diabetics so if you come up with a device a non invasive device for monitoring glucose uh, and uh, taking the parameters continuously then that is going to be a great deal so any of these are uh, are actually there are many companies who are coming up with these kind of devices as well as guys so we are now concerned about physiological signals iot in iot in healthcare is deeply concerned about the physiological signals so you cannot improve what you don't measure so first you have to measure the physiological signal then you have to come up with the technology so in such case let us see how we will measure these physiological signals so one the most important vital parameter in healthcare is ecg sorry guys oh sorry oh. yes so the electrocardiogram is a vital parameter and it is regarding the general abnormalities in the heart correct it can detect the abnormalities in the heart so iot devices if you incorporate these devices will be able to monitor your ecg signal and detect the abnormalities in the heart and latent heart diseases can also be detected so basically we have seen that all the sensors are interconnected to iot then the uh, then the applications can be built in now let us take a typical example of uh, ecg okay which is monitoring electrical activity of the heart now here we will discuss on various functions acquisition procedure to built in iot framework so typically ecg waves means if you could see here it is pq rs wave this is how by seeing this wave only doctor will say you are good or uh, you are not normal okay in order to monitor it can be you can use wearable ecg devices where it is chest one body one or smart t-shirt or ecg patches like glucose patches ecg patches can be there you can wear a jacket which will monitor ecg or it would be chest one only for the your chest some belt will be there inside the belt the sensors will be there so generally uh, if any abnormality occurs in this pqrs wave no we call it as uh, you know some issues so uh, they will check for the frequency they will check for the uh, you know uh, voltages and all so some of the monitoring devices as i told you uh, uh, these monitoring devices can be used so generally they use 12 led ecg system or bipolar unipolar uh, uh, lead system okay so uh, with the methods with the standard or golden standards which is used for measuring system they use they actually minimize that particular device and they incorporate as a wearable device because to anybody who is wearing the device they feel that see i should not say to the public that i'm wearing that device because i feel some persons they can feel it as an prestige issue right so that can also happen so we have to think about the aesthetic we have to think about the social implications of the person and we have to monitor this so if you could see here uh, these kind of sensors will be placed near to the body so uh, there are like it is called as electrodes generally uh, if it is like continuous monitoring or wearable ecg system then uh, we will not use these electrode guys you had specialized electrodes called as dry electrodes why i will say you if you see this electrodes no there will be a gel which is placed inside these electrodes i think most of us we would have known uh, that gel will be actually used for uh, um, you know uh, uh, for resistance matching it will make signals easily go to the 
what your device so with the when you use the gel no in that place some itching may happen correct the gel that that particular gel can dry off correct so in order to uh, because this wearable devices are used for a longer time we cannot use these kind of electrodes now you have to go up come up with the dry electrodes which will be used for a longer time which will be very small in size which uh, which do not needs any replacement uh, which can stick for a longer time which does not cost irritation to the patient all these parameters has to be taken into consideration okay so considering all these parameter we had certain devices as well to be honest so uh, there are devices which is monitoring glucose temperature which will say about the hemostasis condition of a patient eg about the cognitive and brain ppg about their uh, um, uh, normal physiology blood oximetry about their pulse temperature galvanic skin resistance which is saying about the endodermal activity heart rate pulse rate bp respiratory rate emg activity gps energy all these are like vital parameters as most of the devices is monitored so i would just like to explain glucose monitoring iot device because it is in the top okay in diabetes the blood glucose level in the body remains high for a prolonged period so there are two types of diabetes as you know type 1 diabetes type 2 di diabetes and something called as gestational diabetes it is like a temporary diabetes that occurs for pregnant uh, women so commonly used to test are random plasma glucose test fasting plasma glucose and oral glucose tolerance where you go for the laboratory give the samples they by give uh, how do you do it by pricking the hand followed by measurement of blood glucose level so iot based wearable gadgets for blood glucose will be a non invasive technique which is optical based technique where you will use ir lights photodiodes kind of light to monitor your glucose so that no pricking no hurting the persons can happen so these technologies can be used as a watches or it can be used as a gloves rings socks bands so that uh, you know uh, the continuous monitoring of glucose can happen and that data will be sent to the mobile from the mobile it can be sent to the cloud there the analysis can be done understood this is glucose monitoring of iot same will be followed for other parameters as well as guys so here comes our topic of interest so we had seen see these are the parameters monitored anyway it is going to be these parameters that are monitored using your wearable devices so as a biomedical or as a healthcare engineer as in medical technology we are considered about the sensors how these sensors are built in how these center, uh, sensors are interfaced to the devices how the parameter is monitored so in order to interface uh, the sensor to a device we need some kind of um, you know microcontrollers or microprocessors to take up that so generally to develop uh, you know arm um, uh, pick ordino raspberry pis will be used so most commonly right now ordino being powerful cheap and developer kind of board for developing uh, iot prototypes I, uh, ordino is used so ordino uno is a microcontroller board based on atmega 328 uh, data sheet it has 14 uh, digital input output pins as you could see here here digital pins are there it has uh, six analog inputs it has a, a oscillator which is 16 uh, megahertz oscillator it has a usb connection external power supply uh, you had a reset button here yes so uh, you had a power jack you had a ac uh, dc adapter here correct so all these facilities are there so with that ordino we will just see how we can actually interface our sensors so why we are using ordino both generally is because it is like developer and entry level ordino will be useful and it is cheap and it is powerful as well so it has enhanced features and it can be easily used for iot and educational purposes like what we are doing right now so in this ordino board ordino uno you don't have uh, the capacity to transmit the data to the cloud so it is here you can just Uh, you know interface the hardware and you can just monitor the data here only but in ordino nano 33 this is the one of the other boards which is present with the ordino where it is provided with the bluetooth where you can actually send the uh, you know uh, recorded or acquired data via bluetooth so in this board you had a microchip arm cortex which is like 32 bit and you had an adc 
analog to digital converter so once you get an analog uh, biomedical signal it can convert to digital it can be 8 10 or 12 bits and in order to store and in order to process that particular signal we had dac pulse width modulation flash and memory units so uh, this is with arduino guys with raspberry pi uh, i don't think uh, i have to explain more on it because raspberry pi is one of the you know super uh, cool microcontrollers or the boards which is used in today's life so raspberry pi is one of the powerful tools as well as guys so what is raspberry pi it is a series of small board computers it is called a small board computers um which is having wi-fi bluetooth usb network connectivity general purpose input output pins in the on board it is called a single uh, system on a chip soc we call it as so if you have too many components inside a single wafer single silicon wafer we call it as a system on a chip basically it is developed from raspberry pi foundation uk generally these are very small in size it will be like uh, i can say it will be your credit card size boards which you can place it in your packet so with that board you had these many features you see hdmi ports are there four usbs are there choice of ram is there so and it is very powerful as well as guys so any of these boards you can use it for acquiring the parameter as i told you arduino is like entry level uh, and I, right now we are catering for the um, you know wide range of population i thought we can use arduino so uh, before getting to the uh, hands on i wish to uh, you know address few comments so yes one is the question asked to me yes so vishal had told now advanced pacemakers can be a good example correct pacemakers which are imp uh, implanted also they are uh, you know uh, in instrumented with some kind of transceivers where the uh, signals uh, the pulses which are generated when it is generated how much it is generated any data regarding that uh, they are actually uh, you know monitoring remotely yes that is a great thing uh, vishal thank you for mentioning this here then radha had told is iot used in insulin pump uh, patches uh, yes radha here uh, the most interesting thing is uh, had anybody know what is uh, this called artificial pancreases there is something called artificial pancreases where uh, you will have insulin pump and glucose monitoring systems so basically artificial pancreases is something which is going to replace the original pancreases so uh, when your pancreases fails to do its function we go for artificial pancreas which is like a personal device assistance it is a personal health monitoring system it will be a small device mobile phone size device uh, you will have a insulin pump okay and uh, you will have an uh, continuous glucose monitoring uh, device so this continuous monitoring device will be somewhere placed in the spatial uh, part of your skin or in the surface of the skin which will be monitoring your glucose level so once uh, when it is monitoring the glucose level or once it is intervened that some kind of uh, you know uh, less uh, insulin is supplied this insulin pump according to the concentration of glucose glucose in the blood it will supply the insulin via micro needles it will be as a patches in the skin again uh, you will have small wells where the insulin drug will be put on it is it is called as on chip patches or nano sensor uh, patches okay via that uh, you know uh, via that chip uh, the insulin belts will be there from the insulin belts uh, uh, you can actually you know extract insulin and you can inject to via micro needles to the body uh, these kind of applications right now uh, people are working for this is one uh, you know again great application of iot so i had uh, uh, got a message from rahul in my experience sleep cycle is recorded by the movements one have made during the sleep by the watch as mobile device is not connected with the body uh, correct uh, rahul that is true uh, even with the movements right uh, a few few devices are done with the movements but again as i told you uh, with software people are trying to come up with this 
see every see uh, as you could see in the real time it is it is obligate that uh, none of the devices most it is not none of most of your iot devices or smart watches are actually uh, you know reliable or to the diagnostic level at least for physiological parameter as concern it is not that so people are coming up with few ideas like that as well okay that is the thing i am about to say yes galaxy fit 2 yes it can work so tejas is there any side effects of these sensors on the human body this is a great uh, question so uh, this is one uh, biggest point i have to address here uh, as i told you if it is going to be a bearable device okay if you are using uh, a wearable device and if you are using electrode for a longer time yes it is going to be a side effect one the second thing anyways all your personal device assistants or let it be any kind of uh, uh, you know health monitoring system it those are like active devices active devices matla it is like uh, they need some kind of uh, energy to uh, make them work you have to use power those uh, devices are called as active devices using power for functioning is called as active devices those devices when it is kept near to the body there are chances that the heat is generated even in your mobile phone the heats are generated when it is working 24 bar 7 there are chances that the heat will be there or when you are wearing that mobile devices and when you are going going in the rain then splash resistance has to be there when when the device interacts with your sweat again the resistance has to be there correct uh, it should not shock correct so uh, there are certain effects but uh, i do not say directly it is like side effect or biological effect the effects can be like these form where the design engineers or product design developers will address these issues and they will come up with some sophisticated design model got it and uh, to all of you uh, before any devices before any iot smart devices are getting into the market uh, there is something called as regulatory process for medical devices in regulatory process uh, you you have to you know compile for the regulatory compliance of that medical devices so the device has to qualify that regulatory compliance meaning the conformity assessment of of that particular device has to be done so device certification should be there before they uh, you know uh, sale or distribute in the market so need for regulatory check uh, even the devices in the market for uh, for other few years uh, you know the regulatory bodies will check for the compliance of these devices meaning performance of these devices we call it as post market surveillance okay in regulatory a qa engineer or a ra engineer they call it as post market surveillance so uh, generally speaking right now the market is flooded with many kind of wearable devices even the names even the brands we may not know but market is flooded with th those many kind of devices uh, but Uh, but we have to choose uh, the best device which had undergone the device qualification certificates and which had undergone the proper clinical trial clinical trial meaning they they uh, the manufacturer come up with the device stating that my device is intended for that particular use so what they do is they go for the standard laboratory and they will test that medical device in such a way that uh, this uh, manufacturer had told this will this device will do this no it, it is doing it or not they will do they will check uh, for all the quality standards so it could be product quality standards it could be uh, from bureau of indian standards or it could be iec standards or it could be iso standards guys uh, for uh, this medical devices as i told splash resistant ipv6 standards ipv4 standards are there so generally uh, wearable devices are to be certified by medical device regulatory bodies so uh, the side effects uh, the other things everything will be taken concerned by them uh, food and drug administration fda and other certifying agencies for medical uh, devices safety like iec as i told you uh, european standards and other safety standards are applicable to this medical device okay if it is us based device then fda if it is indian based device then it is mdr 2017 so the use of non certified device will lead to wrong diagnosis and even it may put the 
patient's life at risk so we as a educated people we have to check for all these complaints and then only uh, you know we have to uh, get uh, uh, you know we have to buy or purchase that particular medical product that's why apple is always apple okay apple consumer products are always that i hope i had addressed many things and i had addressed the uh, the question as well so can nano sensors enabled for personal health monitoring system straight away it is yes because i had worked with few nano sensors which will be monitoring the bio analytes okay yes people are trying to come up with uh, you know point of care devices which uses very nano very small nano sensors that come up why because let me say you see generally uh, just think as a, a engineer's point of view just think as a consumer point of view when you get a device what you will think it has to be cheap first thing it has to be very small size it has to be very elegant very aesthetic correct so it should have less hardware less technical issue and it needs to be rugged as well because as i told you it has to work in any environment when you go for smart uh, watches right now what what is the first parameter you will see first is cost second is feature third we will see it is water resistance or water non water resistant in the same cost if you have one water resistant and one non water resistant what we will get we will get water resistant correct so we have to see is this particular device rugged it work in meaning it work in extreme conditions and it should be power off optimized how long it is withstanding is the next issue consider for a, a person who is using ventilator at a home think if he has to uh, recharge the ventilator for uh, every 4 hours then it's not going to be a efficient system it has to be for every 15 hours then it is a good system right and this recharge mechanism also it should be like uh, you know a rechargeable battery or you have to come up with energy harvesting mechanisms like energy harvesting meaning uh, with solar energy or something it has to recharge itself via some kind of energy that is there in the environment that would be a great deal so it is it as i told you iot is a field where you can customize you can add on features you can you can uplift the product with one extra feature integrated into it great that is one thing so the second question so that no skin irritation will be happened or patient would not feel like he was wearing something great yes so if you use nano sensor which are like size weight and power optimized we call it as swap swap optimized okay s stands for size w stands for weight p stands for power so swap optimized sensors plus nano sensors when it is nano again power is optimized size is optimized weight is optimized right so that will be the greater deal guys so that's where material science engineer and nanotechnology people are they are working and they are coming up with different sensors let it be electrochemical sensors um optical sensors fluorescent space sensor etc ha tejas thank you thank you so yes uh, great so let us get back to our business guys uh, i'm i'm just you know sharing my screen i hope uh, all the questions are addressed do anybody had any other questions till now guys yes till now anybody had the questions guys no ma'am thank you great so s yes. i don't just give me a minute i'm facing some kind of issue i'm when i'm sharing just give me a minute guys great as nobody had uh, questions as of now let us resume our ppt and get back okay so all this time 
uh, we were talking about what is iot generally what is the process workflow uh what are the design considerations like how do you have to do internal processing where do you have to do how is external processing done why you need internal processing why you need external processing why is iot required for a patient why is iot required for a hospital management system why is iot required for the whole society what is internet of medical things what is m health what is its architecture what are the different applications or the things we had seen as of now so uh, as i told you being healthcare engineers we are actually concerned about sensors which are interfaced sensors which are required for monitoring these physiological parameters so talking about it uh, we thought we can give you a small idea of how a prototype has been developed for healthcare so uh, as i told you during regulations clinical trials are getting in right so before all these process we have to come up with a prototype we have to prove uh, we have to submit a proof of evidence or we have to uh, uh, know the base behind uh, you know uh, either treatment or diagnosis with iot we have to do it and see so in such a way we thought of uh, you know showing you and or giving you a small idea about how it is done how the sensors uh, different sensors are interfaced to the bones and how the parameters are acquired so we thought of first uh, you know giving you an idea about ordino ide download so i hope you all know you have to go to google search type direct away ordino or otherwise i will do one uh, uh, you know uh show to you so that it will be easy might be see as i told you uh yash raj when will the session end might be other 30 40 minutes guy so what i'm doing is i'm putting in ordino id so it will direct you to this link where you can just click in okay so here if you could see download so here the hardware options software cloud documentation community blog about us there so hardware is about uh, talking about the technical specification of ordino family and ordino boots so a uh, software it is about the uh, you know documentation the software is available for different oss cloud uh, ordino has the cloud application okay see set up alexa voice controller in minutes <laughs> you had cloud applications related with it so this could be used for teaching purposes again documentation about all hardware and software then community whenever you had some kind of issues you can post that query so that community people who are using audio can help you blogs and abouts are used so if you get in here you can see in the downloads see uh, depending upon what kind of os you are using you can just download it guys okay and once you download you will get an extension file or a zip file where you can open it where you can open the extension file and you can install it once you install it you you will get a small icon like this ordino ide might be you can click on this ide and you can try to open yes okay so yes it's are available okay got it so for example new sketch so you had uh, uh, this window blinking on your screen correct so if you could see uh this is this is how once when you start it will open up so if you could see this dialog box this is your toolbar where tools are present okay uh, this is your text editor where you will edit or where you will put the source code once you done editing you can just click on this uh, tick mark which is like verify or compile it will compile the codes the source code which you had put in after that you have to upload the code to your board and then uh, you can see the answers in the serial plotter it's a symbol here or in the serial monitor okay this is the general idea once uh, so if you could see here i will just show you i am just guys i am holding an arduino uno board okay 
in hands and i'm just connecting to my laptop okay once by board is connected if you could see in bottom arduino uno not connected it is saying so first what i will do is no first i have to select what i am putting in so i am connecting arduino uno right now uh, the latest updated version it comes with the port itself so before no we have to go to which port and we have to select in but right now here the option is getting in with the port okay generally for the beginners i would suggest first go to file there you will have built in examples like see if in basics blink program will be there you can just click on blink it is like uh, uh, inbuilt examples or inbuilt programs for arduino uno okay I'm sorry why it is taking time so because i am sharing the other web app no it is like struggling out in my end guys i don't know why so it is like a bing program once you are completing with the code you have to click on verify you are verifying uh, that you are doing you had compiled the code without any syntax errors so if it is verified this message will be there or otherwise in red color it will be there after verifying you have to upload the uh, code to the board now uh, if you could see uh, see uh, the uh, the app my in my arduino board uh, the led is blinking okay so if you could see in the void setup which is your main program they had uh, called in the function pin mode where the led of led will be the output point and in the loop function they had written digital write you have to make your led high position and the delay has to be 1000 meaning 10 seconds and or uh, and the digital write next uh, uh, 10 seconds low so my led is blinking each 10 seconds got it <clears throat> that is how it is done so right now let us get back to our ppt so this is how you have to do guys okay so the basic uh, you know unit or basic uh, physiological monitoring parameter is your temperature your temperature is a physiological uh, parameter which is going to say you the hemostasis condition meaning the equilibrium condition of the pa uh, patient or the person if your temperature is low or high both the conditions it is that you are intervent with some kind of disease correct so uh, for for doing temperature uh, monitoring i am here for prototype purpose i am using dht 11 sensor which is called as a temperature digital temperature sensor guys so this dht 11 is a ultra low cost digital temperature sensor and you had thermistor so digital h for humidity t for temperature 11 is a version these are like uh, sensors which are available for arduino in the market okay so for monitoring the uh, uh, temperature you had thermistor and for monitoring the humidity you had layers of electrode so dht11 it is a digital temperature sensor okay basically and if you could see in this picture it had three pins guys the pin configuration you had three pins okay one is signal one is vc plus plus another is ground you had three pins so if you could see in this uh, arduino uh, generally signal means output vc plus plus means it is for uh, the input it could be 3.3 volt or 5 volt input so uh, generally what we will say is before you starting up with any kind of electronic circuit you have to understand the technical specification and you have to study the data sheets correct so uh, might be uh, biotech or other life science people you are not aware of it for others it, you are aware of for biomedical or other background people so bcc you have to, it is a power supply in this is ground pin this is output pin see it is very easy you will connect uh, the signal to uh, it is a digital uh, uh, sensor right you have to give to any of the digital point you had 14 digital pins right you can give to any of the digital pins then vc plus plus for 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending upon its input power then ground you can give it to the ground 
okay just connecting three wires you can see the output in the arduino like this i will just work out and show you but not with temperature as it is basic but i wish to show you uh, other simulator tools as well so uh, with when you when you start working with the dht11 you can actually uh, you know you start it you get the digital signal you convert the signal into temperature see the temp v out is equal to v out into 500 divided by 1023 yeah it is converted the converted is stored as a degree and celsius value got it so the converted value we are checking the temperature is greater than 35 degrees or not if it is greater than 35 degree we uh, uh, we call it as hyperthermia condition where it is in between 35 to 40 degrees celsius if it is less than then it is like hypothermia if it is hypothermia uh, hypothermia will be generally because uh, when the blood supply or oxygen supply is not there in the body only hypothermia condition will occur if hypothermia condition occurs in a severe scale then the person may go to the uh, you know uh, brain issue or nerve problem where the total signaling will be stopped it is in coma condition so most of the coma patients if you touch and see they will be somewhere cold so uh, 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 this patients who are having nerve disorders or for kids who are like preterm infants they will be uh, uh, you know intervened with hypothermia so if you come up with a device which is monitoring just their temperature 24 bar 7 in because in infants and all core temperature they will say uh, where you will leave the thermistor in their natural posterior natural opening okay they will keep the thermistor and it is a very painful uh, procedure for uh, you know preterm infants if you can come up with a non invasive real a realist a reliable and diagnostic level of uh, temperature monitoring sensor then it is great um right now uh, you know uh, the uh, the incubators which are kept for the babies no uh, they are trying to you know uh, capture the temperature but yet it is the reliability is somewhere uh, down but it it is working so if you can come up with some kind of devices or some kind of cloths which is kept uh, under beneath the baby then it's a great deal okay so in order to do this kind of uh, simulations people who want to kick start i would suggest you can uh, you know use walk we which is a simulation tool there are different there are n number of simulation tools available students one is walk we or uh, sorry students i told you it's like listeners like one is walk we um other is <clears throat> thinker cat um you had vertex these are like three popular you know simulation tools so uh, i could uh, see uh, walk we you just put walk we.com then it will take you to this page here it will ask you to sign up uh, because i had signed in already uh, it is just directing me directly so it is just a sign up gentle normal sign up procedure that's it then it will leave you to this page so you can go for my projects you can add new projects uh, i am using arduino uno so i am using i am putting arduino uno so arduino uno plus uh, Com uh, editor file will be opened for you so right now think we are using might be yeah temperature sensor dh p22 is appearing friend so i am just using this okay i am using this uh, temperature sensor okay for this uh, dh uh, t22 there are like four pins okay so in that four pins i will say you the configuration guys the first pin is vcc uh, which will be given for see when you touch it will show first pin is vcc second pin is sda third pin is no connection fourth pin is ground so first pin i am giving to 5 volt Oh my god. Just give me a minute. My monitor, my mouse is not working. Hmm. 
yes so i'm giving to 5 volt okay see because i'm sharing i'm getting some kind of drag issue the second pin is sda which is your signal pin it is a digital pin right so i'm giving it to um, might be second pin then third pin is nc so we will leave it the fourth pin is ground right so i'm give it get to ground okay the this is that's all with the connection guys now uh, we have to write the code for it uh, got it so uh, so generally we will had header files header files or pre uh, pre files where it will, it will include the concerned libraries correct so the first part is because that uh, we are using dh tensor we will first include ash include dht dot h is its extension s yes. then second is we have to say which pin we are actually uh, you know monitoring ash define we are defining that signal pin define d h e p i n sorry i n pin number what is the pin number i had used it's 2 yeah 2 then next we have to design what type of dht we are using because in the ppt i had showed you dht 11 now i am using dht 22 so in order to uh, you know uh, uh, define it i am defining it uh as define dht type dh 22 sorry 22 so we had defined what type of dht we are using okay so you had uh, uh, you had uh, used the functions of dht dot h library by including that library then you had defined the type of dht and type of pin you are using in now we are going to define the object for dht tn i will say you why so it is you can define in a way that dht object Uh, yes so i can name it as dht pin comma dht type will me the primary objects which we are concerned on okay so this is all about defining guys now we will get it into the main programming so uh, first we have to display what we want so serial dot begin is the library function we will be using then we are defining the baud rate baud rate meaning bits per second which defines the speed of the data flow from the microcontroller and the sensor then you have to print the message so i am putting serial dot print ln ln next line right dht initialized okay then now uh, you have to uh, set the parameters and you have to set the objects here as well so i am defining dht dot object to begin okay so uh, now we have to set to uh, measure the what temperature and humidity because we had two variables right we will define those variables guys in the loop okay so see here i had put dht object so here also i should put dht object only okay so in main function i am going to put float humidity equal to dht object dot read 
humidity then float temperature equal to defining the object dht object dot read temperature then now i have to print these values right uh serial dot print ln temperature mm yes temperature because this is going to appear right then uh next line serial dot print temperature parameter same you have to repeat for what happened okay i'm going to do the same for humidity we will check the variable spelling because i am using notepad and different that's why yeah so if you want you can use uh, you know symbols like uh, if you want to display in fahrenheit or display in uh you know celsius or if you want to um, uh, you want to measure or if you want to put percentage symbol you can put it okay see yes people uh, clear with this just give me a minute guys i don't know why my screen is stuck down i hope yes now you can just run save it and run see sketch error token dht object dht pin dht type okay there is some issue dht object it is defined the same way right dht object okay let me put object object yes even then again same temperature okay spelling mistake yes 
yes i had yeah yeah it's i yes, i told you there are like issues correct just give me a minute guys where i will change my keyboard settings just give me a minute i'm sorry i'm sorry for the delay guys I don't know why is my library functions not working, but it. Just give me a minute. Yes, guys, watch this. I heard Discord at the projects. Oh my God. Just give me a minute. new project okay i'm using a tab uh, that's why there is an issue i thought it will work say anyways that's okay uh just give me few minutes where again see this is with esp uh, 32 which is an uh, uh, wifi module the same code but baud rate has been changed here now you could see the temperature is monitored here okay so this is how the csp is work you you had other uh, you know app called tinkercad again you can do it but recently they had removed tinker uh, esp modules wifi modules due to security issues so if you go for projects you can start simulating guys then you had something called as vertex okay vertex again this is a simulation tool you had protease uh, you had multisims where you can simulate and you can do the codings got it so right now uh, let us uh, this is just simulation so right now as sensors are you know available in the market flooded with low cost i would suggest you take up certain sensors where uh, you can use those sensors for the uh, you know uh, pro, uh, modeling and you try it on your own and you see you can see for college students basically yes so this is a flexi flow sensor the flexi flow sensor it will look like very ultra thin i will show you now and it is a flexible printed circuits which can be easily integrated into most of the applications so these kind of flexi flow sensors it can monitor uh, you know load meaning you can measure the weight you can measure the pressure you can measure the force or you can uh, you can use it for fluid monitoring systems oxygen tanks uh, uh, you can use it for uh, blood uh, for elderly people's right for blood flow and all to monitor the force of the blood flow can be monitored and you can monitor the vital parameter so i would like to show you just give me a minute so as you could see here sorry see this is the flexi force sensor i'm having in my hand this is one of the biggest flexi force sensors guys okay uh, you had it in a very uh, small uh, uh, level also you had two pins as you could see here one is vcc and one is ground and the next sensor i will just show before in hands only this is called as touch sensor so if you touch here it is like capacitive based in this flexi force if you could see uh, strands lines if you could see this is like resistance these are like resistors when you when you just move this resistance no there will be fluctuations in the voltage that fluctuations in the voltage is indirectly converted into uh, you know load pressure or force 
okay and as i am showing you this is the touch sensor these are like very cheap sensors it will be uh, less than 100 bucks guys so if you could see this is like a touch sensor this is the capacitive based touch sensor you had an uh, layer behind this blue thing okay you had a capacitance layer because resistance is there as per ohms law okay so resistors will be there where uh, when you touch no again voltage changes that voltage change is indirectly measured as a physical parameter okay <clears throat> and i had an arduino board okay so right now i am going to integrate all these sensors and i am going to show you how it works for people who can start uh, just working on it i think it will be a great deal no the thing is no <clears throat> my keypad i don't know because it is connected to the internet there is some kind of jitter i am facing in i don't know why it is i will just find uh, try to sort it out guys okay so first i will show you how this plexi force sensor is working okay hey janani uh, yes actually uh, you know you you have stopped sharing your video oh okay as well okay anyways <laughs> i might be i will share it in the last no that would be also better because i am facing some technical issue it is like uh, on hold i don't know why <clears throat> Uh, I mean the screen sharing you are telling. Yeah, yeah, but it's like one second data issue. It's like I... lagging. Yeah. Or oh, let me check if I can help you here. One second. Yes. Even I'm I'm trying to change it in that particular simulator where I cannot put my mouse there. great uh, i think now your uh, screen we i have stopped sharing your screen uh, if you can turn on your video and uh, try it out now uh, that might work okay yeah let me <clears throat> yes so Just give me a minute. yeah okay oh, guys yes can you all see my screen uh no. not now yes Yeah, now we can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yes. So generally, uh, for beginners, I would suggest you go to files, you go to examples, you go for, uh, you just see it is a basics, a digital or analog sensor. You first understand what is the technical specification of that sensor. Give the connections. Oh, As I told you, you in Plexi Force, you had only two uh, two pins. One is for your ground, and one is for your signal. So, sorry, one is for your uh, value, and one is for your signal. So I am giving it one to analog A naught, and one for my signal. Uh, sorry, signal and for my input. Okay. So I had just connected in. and uh, once if you are getting connected you go to examples go to analog it is an analog sensor right you go to analog input or analog int uh, serial out just see your sensor is working first verify it is working or not so the program you are just opening the inbuilt program you just open it arduino envo com3 let's see again so yeah 
so your i will show you both the things so that it will be easy for you so just see some kind of at least the noise value is added and it is coming or not you just uh, try uh, seeing it and see it in your serial monitor something some value is getting or not see some kind of spikes don't think it is your output it could be the noise added to it just by moving the sensor see there is some kind of replication which is noted in the window so this is for your uh, general serial analog monitor guys so let me explain see that analog monitor will be generally uh, you know used for mon using you know used for monitoring these kind of uh, small sensors parameter see as you could see in i had uh, uh, declared a variable where force uh, flexi force pin which is uh, given to a not pin this is my analog pin out so int will be the maximum reading and i am getting into the main program where i am defining the baud rate and i am defining the max reading uh, variable and i am starting my uh, program to begin so my value is my analog read so int flexi flog is equal to analog read and flexi force pin this thing a not if the flexi flog's reading is greater than the maximum reading then go for the loop or otherwise come out this is the general thing i had used i don't just don't want to waste my time in doing it that's why i think yes it is uploaded and you could monitor in the senior plotter I'm setting baud rate nine six zero zero. Yes, guys. Actually, you should get an uh, you know output here. I don't know what's the issue. Yes. See, I am. I'm just now keeping an eraser on the top. and see there are too many values plotted see there is as i told you there is some kind of network issue it's not network issue it is because of my laptop uh, it stopped working because i'm opening too many apps sorry guys just give me a minute okay so this is with your flexi force sensor the same goes with your the sensor as well meaning your touch sensor as well so for the signal you will give it to a not um then you had vcc which you will give it to 3.5 volts and then you have ground i am connecting it to ground guys see because it is weekend and i had used consumed most of my uh, data i am facing some kind of issue okay that's fine i think these are like basic things 
Okay. Janani, by any chance yes. you have stopped sharing your screen? Yes, because I'm oh. not able to on my video and do the uh, thing both in a oh, parallel okay. way. Okay. See, there is a voice delay as well. I can hear my own voice as well. Yeah, because I'm cautious. opening too many apps. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Anyways, first I will just open my video. See, once any of your sensors is on, you will get... when you connect to the vcc then you will get the light on okay so once your light is on uh, then you can start with your arduino cc program okay then yes i am connecting my touch sensor guys so why do you need touch sensor is in order to see the elect endodermal activity of your skin why do you want to monitor endodermal activity let us have a small discussion on it okay so with flexi force sensor as i told you you can measure weight pressure force then you can monitor one of the most vital parameters and recently iic bangalore is coming up with a device which is going to talk about your hydration level so basically hydration level is monitored from your skin by checking your endodermal activities why do you want to check endodermal activity is because your skin is uh, your skin is capacitive in nature so it is like a sensor plate uh, of your body where uh, you know the ionic exchange all happens okay so the galvanic skin resistance will fall under the umbrella called as electrodermal activity or endodermal activity refers to changes of sweat gland activity that are reflective okay when you are emotional you get sweat when you are like highly uh, you know tense you get uh, sweat correct so the electrodermal activity is the property of human body that causes continuous vibration in electrical characteristics so you are taking that ion thing and you are going to uh, you know plot it as voltage okay uh, even it is used as a light detector it is used to examine your mental status uh, driver alertness so how thick he is capturing uh, the alertness of students in the classroom stress level of the individuals by by just seeing the galvanic skin res response using iot you can monitor this again as i told you iot touch sensor you had three pins signal vcc ground signal for 3 volts vc sorry signal for a not it is an analog temperature sensor so So I can give this to A not VCC for uh, the voltage input, ground for ground. Okay, then I can just code in and I can see the activity. If I I am just touching in, so that the pulse is coming. So once I am touching in, the resistance goes high because it's going high. I am touching and I am taking so that it it comes like a pulse. I am continuously touching, so it will have a deep pulse, meaning long pulse. I'm 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 just moving hands here and there. I'm i'm just moving my fingers here and then so we are getting spikes okay so uh, we uh, uh, see just now i am seeing the temperature variation only but if we write a code in such a way that i'm when i'm touching the sensor the number has to be monitored Uh, yeah see if you could see here the number has to be monitored like this so, uh, so the sensor value is maximum when i touch strongly 1023 if i touch somewhere light the sensor value changes right so what we do is that uh, we will make it in such a way that we will give a delay we will make it to monitor for minimum 10 seconds because uh, there is a diagnostic uh, you know statement uh, stating that the electrodermal activity has to be monitored for minimum of this many things because because uh, the ionic uh, you know uh, the changes can be only captured for once we can we are minimally monitoring for 10 seconds only so in that case we will monitor for 10 seconds for every 10 seconds it will monitor the uh, electrodermal activity and come up with a graph from the value from the threshold we can say you are emotional you are stressed or what so yes next is your heart rate sensor it is same like your uh, electrodermal activity meaning your galvanic skin response sensor like uh, ground vcc signal are there so if your your heart rate is monitored if it is something above your normal level it is called as uh, bradycar uh, 
uh, tachycardia and below it is called as uh, bradycardia correct you can come up with such kind of applications as well so today i mainly thought of introducing you and showing you the total iot application used for monitoring this uh, oxygen uh, saturation level in blood which is called as spo2 so generally uh, you know the market for wearable spo2 monitoring is very high i remember 5 years before spo2 uh, you know the total uh, device cost was around Uh, 2000 right now it can uh, brought down to 600 it is because of these kind of prototypes are increasing in the market so the hemoglobin without oxygen we can call it as deoxygenated hemoglobin this uh, hemoglobin without oxygen we call it as sorry uh, without oxygen deoxygenated with oxygen we call it as oxyhemoglobin so oxygen sap uh, saturation in blood is called as spo2 so uh, oxygen saturation simply refers to percentage of available hemoglobin that carries in the oxygen so how many molecules of hemoglobin is there in the uh, blood only we will be calculating so that's where we are saying percentage for example there are 16 hemoglobin in units and none of the 16 have oxygen means then it the oxygen saturation is zero percentage see 16 uh, hemoglobin uh, units are uh, there so oxygen should be above that binding to that hemoglobin if none is none of the 16 is having zero sorry none of the 16 is having oxygen then we call it as zero percentage if eight has we call it as 50 percentage correct if all 16 has we call it as 100 percentage so in summary oxygen saturation tells you the percentage of total hemoglobin that is carrying oxygen pulse oximetry uses light to work out oxygen saturation so the light is emitted from the light sources which goes across the pulse oximeter probe and reaches the light detector okay so uh, i am here using max 30100 sensor where it is an Uh, you know non invasive optical based sensor so probes are usually positioned on the finger tips okay uh, and the if it is like a wearable device you can uh, have it in the form of uh, finger rings wrist bands watches headbands etc so uh, okay so if you keep it above the light light source down you will have photodiode up you had led okay so uh, generally the thing is you no know, the amount of light that is absorbed by the finger depends upon the physical properties okay so uh, to calculate oxygen saturation we will see how much amount of uh, light has been absorbed by the substance the length of the light how many uh, you know what is the transmittance rate these are the parameters we will uh, dis, uh, we will see uh, just to talk in detail on it yes so um talking about spo2 basically spo2 sensors you will have a red light ir light and photodiode red light will be 660 nanometers ir light it is it will be around 860 uh, to 980 nanometers if i am right they operate in these ranges so we are going to monitor pulsating rtl blood flow only in the pulses we will get the oxygen level and non pulsating venous blood flow so blood and other tissue components will be also added because anyways we are keeping the finger so other tissue components should add in right then we are going to calibrate and find out using beers lambert law okay so uh, the presence of oxygen component in the blood by means of transmitted components is what we are taking into concern what we are trying to measure here is the red transmittance value here uh, so the red transmittance value and it is going to change based on the oxygenated components in the blood okay which is carried by the blood in ir transmittance component it is going to give uh, the information about venous blood which is Uh, which would be the blood tissue the bone and other uh, substance emitted uh, value so based on the light intensity variation we will we will calibrate and we will do uh, we will calculate the spo2 value guys so 
see this is the red transmitter this is the infrared transmitter we will calibrate using b trumbach law and we will come out with what is the percentage of oxygen as i told you generally to talk if you had 16 16 molecules where eight molecules are carrying oxygen 16 molecules of hemoglobin are totally present and if eight are carrying then it is eight uh, hemoglobin are carrying oxygen molecules then it is like 50 percentage okay as i am running out of time uh, i thought of showing you a small uh, you know uh, uh, development of spo2 monitoring we had also integrated few other parameters what i had used is i had used to two sensor guys one is spo2 sensor so this is spo2 sensor this is the ir this is the photodiode and this is the ir component just now i had explained you know so this is the max 30100 sensor what i'm going to do is i'm going to use node mcu where it is like wifi enabled if i'm going to connect this spo2 with my node mcu then Uh, uh, i can actually transmit the data to the cloud and do analytics okay so uh, in max if you could see you had five pins so this five pins if you could see one pin is vcc the vcc will be either connected to vcc of your esp the scl pin in your max 30100 will be connected to d1 pin sda will be connected to d2 pin int will be connected to d1 pin again and ground will be connected to ground so uh, int is your Uh, this max is your uh, actually i2c communication protocol if you actually you know download the required library functions for max and esp uh, uh, you know board you don't want to connect this int pin generally okay so this is your connection diagram guys so what i thought is i can show you in an oled how the value is been displayed okay i don't know how far again this connectivity is going to be i will just show you oh. yeah so so this is my connection i hope it looks neat see you had an esp you had an esp module this is how your esp uh, node mcu module looks like this is my oled this is my max sensor guys that five pins i told you no those five pins are connected to my o, uh, esp module and my oled uh, because i did not show you uh, you know this thing uh, dht i am using dht 11 here okay i am trying to uh, you know monitor my uh, thing so just give me a minute because arduino is not working i will i actually i'm trying to code it in the function itself just give me 2 minutes guys yeah so yeah uh i had initialized esp okay i had included the library functions which are required for esp which is said in the arduino i had included the library functions for oled and max sensors and i because it is i2c communication protocol i had included the library functions for i2c communication protocol and i thought of uh, you know displaying the temperature and the max value so once it is started it will show you initializing pulse or thing so once the web uh, client application is on it will show success and this uh, symbol will get in i had initialized by oled also when i keep my fingers here it will take some time guy and it will display the parameters okay these parameters what i thought is i will link it to the thingspeak lab thingspeak is a uh, cloud analytics platform which is developed by the mathworks okay so i got the output here i don't know you are able to see or not because i i had a camera where i could i thought i could integrate but it's not you know generally working okay i think you can see my screen 
this is my thing speak profile again uh, you know you have to sign in you have to create your account uh, in order to open the thing speak lab so this is how you have to create your account i'm just my profile see this is my account and i had a keys this key is called api key this is the you know uh, link card where i will use it in my arduino code just to link the parameters in my library so it will be like this you just give your mail id then your password so i had created patient monitoring see where you could see the graph see uh just give me a minute guys i will just on my hotspot so that the data will be updated here i will check my hotspot speed that's the issue i hope my uh, you know there is some kind of just technical issue in sharing you will get the update here see it is showing only yesterday but i am seeing yeah hmm. see just now i had cleared my background data and as data is available for this esp wifi to uh, it, i had uh, you know connected my esp to my local uh, wifi okay and i had given that credentials in the code so that this wifi is actually taking the data this esp or node module node mcu is taking the data and it is sending to the thing speak lab where i'm monitoring my data if you could see it is temperature is 32 spo2 is 95.2 uh, yes somewhere around 95 and my beats per minute it is like 61 see bpm temperature and spo2 can be monitored using your uh, esp module so uh, see last entry is less than a minute if your data no i think most of the people who had worked you know very well if your speed is very low it takes some amount of time with max again so max sensor itself has an jitter of 10 seconds so i had made it in such a way that my baud rate is high and i had made it like 20 seconds delay in the program and then i had given to the esp so that only that a uh, small delay of you know half a minute was there and again depending upon your cellular data connection the data will be displayed in this dashboards so generally when you get in right you have to Uh, this is how your uh, thing will be you have to create new channel here you have to create the project name you have to describe what kind of thing in the field one you have to create like iot uh, bpm in the name you have you can give any name see i'm i'm showing you pulse right pulse using max 30100 uh, so i can just save this uh, channel so i will use this uh, i i showed you api key no if i am going to link that in my program then my sensor value will be drawn here that's it guys it is that simple so as you as i told you see in my oled the parameters are displayed yes guys i am sorry that i am not able to share uh, you the screen because of the issues 
but this is how generally you know people who are going to kick start with internet of uh, uh, things for healthcare will start doing in so the first thing we have to consider is the reliability of the sensors okay uh, uh, the things like arduino and these sensors the reliability is very low guys just for an entry level and for the connection level you can just start working with it and it is as i told you it is less than 200 bucks each of the sensor will be less than 200 bucks and you can monitor in even for emg you had sophisticated sensor module for arduino you go and search in google like arduino uh, sorry 37 in one sensors for arduino you will get most of the sensors where you can start working and start programming and for emg if you go to protocentral.com uh, where you will get the standard uh, you know sensors for it and you can start working in uh, you know um, the sensors from texas and proto central they are really good okay uh, rather than the sensors which are available in the third market so talking about wearable devices see uh, there are uh, certain uh, devices which are created in uh, india during this pandemic these are like uh, recent uh, you know innovations and these are like regulatory applied uh, uh, products one is from ira which is assisted technology for blind which using the stick walking stick then by rabidosis which is like emergency condition for uh, mental retarded people elderly people the next it is grafto works which is actually a uh, small device when you click on it will alert to the doctor and the doctor will get to your room kind of this is kind of an small gadget in the hospitals so uh, one by metronic which is used for remote uh, patient monitoring which you can do uh, video conferencing you can talk to them all those things so these are like reason advancements guys this are happening in india so talking about key challenges one we have for wearable sensors for sure it is about battery life how long the battery life will sustain because when a person is wearing it he cannot go to different places and he cannot put in next is ergonomics how aesthetic it is ceiling splash resistant i had mentioned safety security and privacy the data should not breach so if i am going to add two parameters in future is my uh, current iot system will able to do it that is called scalability increasing the number of sensors uh, as is it real time consuming or what are the social implications as i told you many people would have not think about you know i wearing a device because i feel i myself it is like healthy or i feel what other people will tell so these are like key challenges for wearable system guys so talking about market growth uh, drivers and challenges uh you know i think most of the people know what is regulatory is been so even for the softwares developed for uh, certain medical devices those softwares also to be you know regulatory filed so if the government policies uh, are good government is taking care about the device qualification certification and regulations then it is like good lifestyle changes where we want healthcare to the doorstep patient engagement competitive offering shorter lead times increased awareness more number of aging populations and more number of device availability this market is going to increase more and more the one of the drawback or one of the challenges is one is security how you are going to maintain privacy data complexity creating more very uh, large volume of data what we are going to do with this data how we are going to store how we are going to retrieve all these things interoperability so if i am using a ventilator from one uh, thing and i am using a glucose monitor from other company how would these two different companies will get to a single platform and it will work that is there connectivity problems again uh, see today what happened with the net connectivity every time your net connectivity may not be good see the thing is like we are at the end of the day and see from the morning anyways we will be using the internet right now think other than having this arduino or esp i had some kind of um, patient monitoring system obviously the, because of net connectivity some issues would have happened right which is inevitable in today's life so these are like challenges guys so that's it about the course thank you for your patient listening